With the return of the Halo Infinite 10 rifle for like the millionth time, 3 for 3 actually somehow subverted expectations, while also doing the most 3 for 3 thing I have ever seen. So far fans have enjoyed the newly dropped content update, so it's my job to break down this operation and either crap on 3 for 3's performance or give them their praises. And as I play through the update, there is something I noticed that confirms a suspicion of mine, and I think I have a solution to solve Halo Infinite's problem with these operations. But did Tenrise Return create a sense of buzz for Halo Infinite leading into the summer? In what ways did Halo Infinite fall on its face this time? Let's clean off our katanas, practice our genjutsu, and jump right into this. I think nowadays when we think of Halo Infinite, most fans will be sort of depressed. These recent operations have been kind of a fail, and we've been wondering whether or not 3 for 3 will actually change their plans and for the love of God, pray that they drop back into those seasonal passes. And every time a new operation arrives as a collective fan base, we all analyze each update. And for the last two CU updates, it's been rough. But how do they do this time? Alright guys, we did it. Halo Infinite saved, game of the year, 20 million added subs on Game Pass, but I gotta be honest, they had some pretty good stuff added to this update. The biggest addition by far was the creation or reintroduction of the Match Composer. So a little bit of a throwback Thursday, back from the MCC days, the Match Composer gave the player the full ability to pick and choose what game modes they want to play from various playlists. So if you're in the mood for big team battle but don't want to crap your pants and play stockpile, well guess what Chad, you don't ever, and I mean ever, have to play that godforsaken mode ever again. You can banish them to the Shadow Realm, exile them to the reaches of Narnia, and forget about that dumb mode ever existing. You don't want a sweaty night in 4v4 and just want to play a social night of Team Slayer? Or better yet, if you just don't care, you can jump right into the matchmaking and get matched instantly with anybody. This was literally one of the things that you honestly forget was so damn good about Halo MCC, but after playing it again, I honestly feel the meaning of true peace and harmony. Remember the dumb days of only getting BTB heavies as a rotational playlist? Well, with this update, it's now permanent. And that literally is the case for legit every playlist ever invented. I mean, except for Last Spartan Standing. I mean, we're not going to talk about that one. This gets me in the feels because there were even more modes out there that are sleeper hits, like Slay Holds, that I actually miss playing because it's so rare to actually match into it. Attrition and Dodgeball were all great modes, and now you can just pick them up and just play. And I think the best part about this is that they've even separated three for three maps and community made maps into separate playlists. So you can pick and choose the pool of maps you want to play on. Basically you get the chance to play all the stellar maps made by the community or the somewhat turd sandwich made maps by three for three. And wait, what is this? Did, did my eyes deceive me? Is that not but one, but four ranked modes that we can play now officially? Oh, shit. I mean, this has got to be fake, right? They actually added all the ranked modes to Halo Infinite, and now we can officially play a full lineup of ranked lobbies, which is unheard of in this game because they've never done that a single time. We've always had a option of two, with one always being rotated out on a monthly basis. I mean, yes, this should have happened since day one, but that's that's still something. And even the new game mode, Juggernaut, is mad fun. I think the playlists and just new additions to play are absolutely great to see so far. I mean, damn, when, when you look at actually the changes that were added, it's pretty damn great. And even some game shifts like the Mash Composer have more impact than what I originally thought was going to be. 3 for 3 had exceeded expectations with this type of a game-changing moment, especially when you think about how the game started with barely having anything to play, but now you with the match composer, you having the full capability of picking any sort of match you want to jump into is a direct shift from what the game originally was. And if you love the match composer or think it needs adjustments, let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, just like in 3 for 3 fashion, after every good thing I say, I need to check my surroundings because I'm about to get kicked square in the nutsack. Play the corners, rookie. The operations pass is mixed. I mean, don't get me wrong. Free stuff is always great, and I'm always excited to get something just thrown at me that looks pretty good. But when you look deeper into the trailers and discussions about the cool armors that they're going to be showing off, I mean, I know for a fact there's going to be a catch. I looked at the cover art for Tenerai and I was like, oh man, that double bladed armor set looks pretty awesome. I can't wait to unlock in the operations and wait, wait, wait a minute. It, it's not in the past. What, where could it be? You know 3 for 3 is making this part of the shop. It's almost a guarantee. We're getting hit with another round of shop bundles that make me age like the movie Jack. It's just sort of frustrating at this point because when you think about all the bundles 
in various armors and colors that they were able to put into the shop and all these damn operations. If you were to take all that stuff and put it into seasonal updates, then we would probably have content available all the way to season 10 at least, which would be so much better than this operations bullshits and store updates that are all over the place. It just is mind numbing. And yes, I know what you're going to say. Mars seasonal updates are just money grubbing bullshit. This should all be free. Yes, of course. But we're talking about Microsoft. Microsoft giving away things for free would be like me beating Eldering without dying. It's not going to happen. Yeah, the prices are complete crap. $22 for two armor pieces. Sick. Awesome. Another $22 for three armor pieces. Whoopee. I'll, let me just crack out my credit card really put the work in and unlock all these items and oh look at the exchange all this new stuff added oh looks like i can only unlock seven things total awesome so not much new stuff there huh nothing really added that i can really say is game changing compared to what we saw before the halo shop being bad is essentially the motto or catchphrase for nearly every content creator out there that covers halo except your boy i not only trash on the shop but i'm also going to trash on some other stuff too so just want to give you that heads up. As much as I love bringing back Tenray aesthetic, we only get one new Forge map technically in this update, which is pretty embarrassing. And yes, I know they are adding new maps to ranked, but I mean, come on, guys. I mean, you're telling me that with all these people at three for three, that we can't even make Forge based maps anymore. There's even Forge maps made by the community that are in the thousands that have been played, and we can't even incorporate one of those damn things in here. It's just embarrassing. And when I think about the game mode Juggernaut, I, I have fond memories of killing people with my hammer with a smile on my face. And then I realized 3 for 3 announced that this game mode was made entirely in Forge, and they'll be relying on Forgers to not only put out the maps, but also the game modes too. What? This this just gets me upset because what this tells me is that, yes, I knew that Forge saved this game a long time ago. I, I said it in a video. That's not surprising, but not even the devs are working on modes at this point. And basically, the game is being run by the community. But wait, does that mean that most likely rumored modes like Assault and VIP are probably not even coming into this game? Probably. I'm flabbergasted. I, I am dumbstruck. How does this game even function at this point without forgers? And people actually have the gall to not put in forge based maps that the community wants at this point. It's it's just brain rot, the cringe, the pain. I can look past all the crap of the store, the maps and the lack of exchange items. But when I see modes that can be released that were promised for years, that really puts a knot in my ass and it pains my soul. And to finalize my biggest fears after playing this update, we're also hit with some recent news. Sakai Kai Chow, who was an animator over at 3 for 3, has officially left the company. And you might be thinking, well, Mars, what, what's the problem? Well, Sakai's job was to work on the graphics and animations for weapons and gameplay. And with the rumors of whether 3 for 3 would drop guns or vehicles with their future updates, this news officially kills any sort of hope left of this ever happening. Maybe it was my coping levels or my unyielding hope, but this news just says... I'd be utterly shocked if we did get a double barrel shotgun in any update in the future, but with this news, it sort of seems like anyone left that would be working on those guns for Infinite are no longer there or at least just working on Halo 7 at this point. 3 for 3 has really screwed up their post-launch plans of guns and vehicles, and the awesome sandbox they had set up with their gameplay cannot really see further advancements, and I feel like we won't be seeing anything new until the next game. 3 for 3, you know, you fucked it up. So when I look at the update, I, I think I have a possible solution to fix the content problem going forward. No, I'm not saying we do a soft relaunch and pretend that everything is perfect now. What I'm going to suggest is drastic, mind-blowing really. I think it's time that we open up the mod tools for the community. Let the fans really take control of this game and grant us the ability to get access to all the mod tools so that we can make a developer level maps and experiences for this game. The Forge Falcons are a prime example of what the community can do if you give them the resources to make something awesome. They literally put Nazi zombies in Halo and I'm thoroughly impressed. They're releasing the Battle Royale soon and all I can say is that if every talented Forge community were given the access to mod tools, this game would get content levels that would be unimaginable. I mean, I feel like I can guarantee that fans would come back in droves to play new creations at least to test them out. I mean, so many fans jump back into Halo Infinite just to try out zombies mode, even if it was only for one week. Imagine if those types of updates were seen daily. It would be amazing. We literally would get a better version of Warzone from Halo 5 or a real battle royale 
or even weapons from older games. I mean, maybe I'm just dreaming at this point. But what I'm saying here is that if Halo Infinite's life cycle is at the very end, then I feel like why not add something that is going to be new? Unless you're going to drop Halo Infinite into the PlayStation Marketplace, which is still up in the air at this point, then allow the fans to have their way with this game and allow them create modded tools and game experiences that might see a slight resurgence of the fan base to experience how fun this game is. And when I look at the return of Tenerai, I honestly think 3 for 3 did a solid job. The match composer surprisingly was much needed and made me appreciate the way that MCC was fixed years ago and actually made the game fun. And now given the option to pick any way I want to play, makes me feel better about jumping to either a casual or sweaty experience. 3 for 3 actually exceeded my expectations. You don't really hear that every day. But as I mentioned before, it's 3 for 3. You can't praise them too much without a catch. And they deserve criticism that we still haven't seen a weapon or vehicle added to this game. And with zero hope of that ever changing, it feels like the mod tools will be the only thing left to really change this game at all. The shop is gross, but there are still decent amount of things you're gonna lock if you're new to the game. So I think being a newer fan of Halo Infinite right now feels like a perfect experience. And for those of you that were players of this game since day one, you can definitely say this title has been through one hell of a ride, but I'm looking forward to seeing what 3 for 3 will announce with what the future of this title is. Speaking of the future, if you want to check out what my hopes are for the future of Halo 7's campaign, go check out the video in the end screen and let me know what you think in the comments. If you like this type of content, drop a thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.